Koi than nice cold nuka cola and slightly less irradiated, it's me, Jeff Gazos. And joining us today, though he'll try to convince you that you're better off listening to a freeside junkie, is my lovely lizard friend, Arcade Ganon, who is exploring. The Fallout game franchise provides a fascinating window into a hypothetical post nuclear future. It addresses questions of how humanity begins to rebuild after the world as we know it is destroyed. It shows the inevitability of conflict, the dire consequences of the folly of man, the desperate scramble for resources when all that's on your mind is survival, the search for belonging and unity. Unity? The selfish decisions we make when our lives are on the line. Fallout does an amazing job of describing the human condition. Each game's wide cast of characters and companions provides the player with a series of narratives about what it is like to live in their world. Even at times of conflict and desperation, we are still human. We still laugh, we still cry, we still seek love, friendship, and family. I'd imagine everyone has at least one Fallout character they relate to, whose story resonates with them, even though our world is so different from theirs. I could compliment Fallout's writers forever on the complex, exciting characters they've created. And I would, if that's what this video was about. Instead, I want to provide a critique on something I've noticed the fandom at large doesn't seem to be talking much about, and something the writers don't seem to be delivering on to the level at which they could. I want to talk about Fallout's problem with disability representation. The number of canonically disabled characters in Fallout is abysmally small. A Google search for disabled characters in Fallout gives you a few Reddit threads of people asking about disabled characters within the universe, an article about the wheelchair item added to Fallout 76, and that's kind of it. The first disabled character who comes to mind is Proctor Ingram from Fallout 4. She and Joshua Graham are the only Fallout characters I've noticed who are visibly disabled. First and foremost, I really want to praise the writer, parentheses, S writers, who created her. I think Ingram is a great character. She's got a great personality. She's a smart, no-nonsense woman who cares about the Brotherhood and the work she's doing for them. You get a glimpse of the person behind the Proctor when you read about her sharing sweets with Proctor Tegan, and Night Captain Cade making excuses to get her to spend time with him. One of my favorite missions is Spoils of War, where she accompanies you to find a beryllium agitator at the synth-infested Mass Fusion building. We should both head over to Mass Fusion to get our hands on the beryllium agitator first. That's if you don't mind a little company, of course. We're in position! Go! Go! See you on the roof, Paladin! If there is one NPC I wish I could have had as a permanent companion, it's Ingram. She's a great, strong female character, who I think would be loads of fun to explore the Commonwealth with. She has so much potential beyond what the game gives us, and what the game does give us isn't always the greatest. You feel like telling me how you ended up that way? That's a little personal, don't you think? Just as it's unimaginably rude to go up to a disabled person in real life and ask why they're disabled, I feel like it's rude to press for the speech check that gets Ingram to explain how she was disabled. Beyond that, this shows a larger problem media generally has with disabled people. It feels the need to explain them. There's often an underlying narrative. They want you to pity the disabled person when you hear their story, or be inspired by the fact that they continue to live their life. Even if this wasn't the writer's intention, that doesn't make it any less harmful. And I'm disappointed that this is part of the first interaction you have with Ingram because the rest of the narrative about her disability is, in my opinion, very well done. If you read the terminals around the Pridwin, you'll find a disagreement between Elder Maxim and Proctor Ingram. Ingram wants to be allowed to resume fieldwork, and she's demonstrated that her power armor, her mobility aid, is suitable for this. But Maxim won't let her leave the Pridwin. It's easy to see this as a case of ableism, but it isn't. The truth is that Proctor Ingram is far too valuable to the Brotherhood to be allowed to risk her life. Maxon is just using her disability as a convenient excuse to keep her in the safety of the Boston airport. 
This part of her story makes for much better representation. It shows so much more about Ingram's character than her disability. She's a dedicated soldier who craves action. But her dedication has come back to bite her in the ass because she's made herself indispensable. Disability is a fact of Ingram's character, but it isn't her character. This is the kind of measured take on representation I'd like to see more of. Fallout falls short with its other disabled characters, to the point that with some of them, I don't even know if they can be counted as representation at all. Ranger Ghost is meant to be a person with albinism. Side note, I've been using the Fallout wiki for reference as I write my script, and I really don't like the language they use around disability. Afflicted with albinism, bound to her power armor frame. It's 2022, and I think it's time to update the terminology. Anyway, albinism is recognized as a visual disability that causes blindness. This is just my opinion, I'm not sure what the writers and developers intended, but I feel like Ranger Ghost's albinism is misrepresented. It's unrealistic for a sniper to have a visual disability, and I feel like that wasn't taken into account when her character was made. I was also unsure of how to approach the large number of characters who are implied or mentioned to have PTSD. Night Captain Cade's terminal has an entry that suggests Paladin Dance's inability to sleep and throbbing headache may be a result of post-traumatic stress disorder. Corporal Betsy is also mentioned to have lasting trauma from her encounter with the fiends. In general, the subject of PTSD in the Wasteland, especially in militaristic groups like the Brotherhood of Steel and NCR, is really interesting. When the average person is constantly exposed to stressors and trauma, will the disorder even be recognized, or is it simply a fact of life? I don't have anything conclusive to say here when it comes to representation, just that I'd like to see more representation of how characters process trauma. The fact that I have to refer to some characters' disabilities as being implied also highlights the problem. It's wonderful when the media you create is open-ended, enough to allow the player to create headcanons and see the world as they want it to be. That's why I love RPGs. But it becomes a representation issue when the majority of the minority representation your player sees comes from headcanons and fan creations. Take Ten of Spades, for example. He struggles with a stutter and trauma after the fiend's attack on himself and Corporal Betsy. But he's a very minor character, and the game gives very little information on him. If you want to go deeper into his story, you'll have to do so on your own, through inferences and headcanons. Ranger Andy is another disabled character who has come to mind. He was injured by a fall down the stairs, which has him confined to his bungalow. But he talks about being forced to retire from the NCR after falling into a Legion trap. The narrative around his disability is one of loss and frustration. It's realistic. And that brings me to my biggest complaint about Fallout. The number of disabled characters is just unrealistically small for the setting. If there is one thing Fallout has taught us, it's that... War. War never changes. And the wave of destruction from war brings not only death, but injury. I find it odd that we don't have larger numbers of soldiers and veterans who have been permanently disabled in battle. Beyond that, the wasteland is inherently dangerous. We've seen what a death claw did to Arthur Maxon's face. Imagine what one could do to the rest of a person. It just doesn't make sense that there are so few disabled characters. I of course understand that game engines have their limitations. Take for example this stunning concept art for Mama Murphy, and notice that her mobility aids don't transfer over to her final form in the game. Character models in games are limited by graphical capacity and hardware. Fallout has definitely evolved since its days as a humble interplay RPG, but the variation in each game's character models is still limited. I absolutely understand that it may not be possible to have characters who use wheelchairs, for example, just as Fallout has no usable vehicle models. But Proctor Ingram is evidence that Bethesda is more than capable of including disabled characters. And that doesn't even cover the lack of characters with invisible or non-physical disabilities. Of course, this is where representation gets tricky. If every disabled character comes with a sob story and becomes someone who is so inspiring despite 
then you're doing a disservice to disabled people. Characters like Joshua Graham and Boxcars are disabled as plot devices. They exist to demonstrate the Legion's brutality. This, too, is a disservice. Joshua Graham is well-written, and his disability is an important part of his story, but I don't consider this to be proper representation. Disability shouldn't need to be the center of each disabled character's narrative. I'd like to quickly touch on ghouls, but I honestly think they deserve their own analysis altogether. Ghoulification is absolutely disabling, as evidenced by the ongoing physical and mental degradation it causes. Ghouls face discrimination based on their appearance, and due to the fact that once their minds have degraded enough, they will inevitably become feral. Ghouls can definitely be considered an allegory for disability, among other things, but I wouldn't necessarily consider them to be a reliable form of representation. It's hard to gracefully write disabled characters, especially if you are not disabled yourself. But that's why you do your research and bring on consultants. Or even better, you make space for disabled people to write our own narratives. It's cowardly to shy away from including disabled characters at all, out of fear of getting it wrong. Side note, Bethesda, if you're watching, I would love to write some autistic characters for you. I'd like to pivot to talk about some representation I'd love to see. I think including disabled characters who feel appropriate for the setting and story will add to immersion. I'd like to see more exploration into the effects of radiation and FEV exposure. Since the first fallout, we've had psychers whose mutations give them psychic powers. The forecaster in New Vegas explains that he suffers from headaches when using those powers. This thing on my head is headache medicine. It works real good, except I can't think when it's on. Really think, I mean. Thinking hurts you too? Aw, I wish I could let you have the one on my head, but I can't. It hurts real bad when I don't wear it. Ouch. Thinking small only hurts a little, but it's a sharp pain. Sorry, sir. All that thinking has made my head hurt. I don't think I'll be doing any thinking for a long time. I think this is a good start. I'm curious about the effects of generation after generation being constantly exposed to some level of radiation. I'd also, like I mentioned previously, like to see more characters who have been disabled in the conflict that constantly plagued the wasteland. Veterans of the Battle of Hoover Dam who lost their limbs to legionaries. Scavengers who were caught in a crossfire and paralyzed. Railroad agents who have developed PTSD after witnessing the plight of their safe houses. Everyday people living with the struggles brought on by a hostile post-nuclear world. And I'd like to see characters who have lived all their lives with a disability and had to adapt in a world where diagnoses and accommodations aren't easily accessible. I plug my own OC a little too much, but I think he's a great example of this. He's autistic, and he has to navigate overwhelming surroundings and social situations he doesn't understand with people who are armed and may not be so forgiving if he fails to mask. But he understands robots in a way few others do. The people around him underestimate him because he fails at first impressions and social norms, but when he joins the Brotherhood as a scribe, he's able to dedicate himself to the things he loves and generate valuable research and knowledge. I'd love for Bethesda to explore disability more with their characters. I think the best way to do it would be with a companion, someone who opens up as they gain your trust. It's a great way to steer away from the temptation to be nosy and ask about someone's disability the minute you meet them, and to be sensitive to how personal disability can be. New Vegas did an amazing job of portraying queer characters because it didn't build their personalities from their queerness. Rather, these identities were treated as what they were, identities one of the many facets of the character's larger personality. I think the best way to approach disability is the same. Make space for your character's disabled identity alongside their motivations and morals and general personhood. In general, I think video games really have a long way to go when it comes to accurate disability representation. We as players do have to recognize that there are limitations in the kinds of models that can be used. But that is by no means valid reasoning to nix disability representation entirely. 
When it comes to Fallout and the overall story-based game genre, dialogue is a powerful tool. I would love to have productive conversations with characters about their disabilities. There's so much more that disabled characters can offer than a quick, so what's up with you, followed by a sob story behind a speech check. I'd love to see narratives of adaptation and accommodation. Disabled characters dedicating their lives to building mobility aids for fellow disabled folk in the wasteland. Towns coming together to support blind or deaf residents. Autistic characters spending their time digging up and chronicling information on their pre-war interests. I even just want to see disabled characters existing. NPCs walking through the wasteland on prosthetic legs, repeating one-liners about their time in the Mojave making them wish for a nuclear winter. Patrol in the Mojave almost makes you wish for a nuclear winter. This is the kind of small detail that adds immersion. It makes the world feel just that much more realistic. And beyond that, it makes a difference when the audience can see themselves in the media they consume. Thank you so, so much for watching. I adore Fallout and I adore video essays and was super excited to be able to share my thoughts. I'll have plenty more content coming soon and my socials will be linked in the description below. I'd love to get in touch. Special thanks to all my buddies over Discord who offered opinions and insight to help me make this video, and to my amazing friend Rain who edited my script and video and isn't bored of hearing about Fallout. Yet. Until next time, happy trails, friends. From this wasteland they say you are going we will miss your bright eyes and sweet smile For they say Patrol in the Mojave almost makes you wish for a nuclear winter Patrol in the Mojave Patrol almost makes you wish for a nuclear winter